Okay, it's two o'clock in my my watch here, so on my start. Hi everyone, welcome. Um, I'm Gabby Barbosa. I'm an instructional designer at West Liberty University, and I have been working with e-learning for more than 15 years, and I love it. Um, I have a master's degree in educational psychology, and I'm working towards my doctoral degree in instructional design and technology. So to start, I'm going to read this here, and I'm going to put a question on, on the chat that I would like you to answer for me. So are you wearing pajamas right now? A is no, B is 100% yes, C is business top, um, PJs, PJs on the bottom, and D, I dress today for the conference. Okay, Lydia said no. Hannah said no. D, ooh, we have, okay, we dress for the conference today, huh? <laughs> that is cool. Oh, D. Oh, at least I have people that are not in pajamas today. That is a great start. Not fancy clothes. N neither am I. It's just a, um, just to be ready for the conference. So I have a second one just so I get to know who is my audience here. So what position best defines you? An instructional designer, a professor or a teacher, a K-12 or, or higher ed staff, or just curious about the topic and laying down in bed? Instructional designer, the teacher, professor, let's see who else, let's see. So I know my, my instructional designer friends are here. Lucy's just curious, sure. <laughs> uh, okay, that's good. I'm going to read one more. Technology integration specialist. Okay, um, this presentation I created, um, maybe for some of you will be a little basic, but uh, hopefully you will learn something from it. So I just wanna make sure if I, if I go with a topic that everybody knows too much, just tell me to skip and I'll do it. I'll keep, try to keep an eye on, on the chat. So um, here. Um, in this presentation, I'll cover the basics of what you need to consider when you select an image for use it online. I have three major topics, that is the image purpose, um, the accessibility, and the copyright. I just want to make clear that I'm not a cop copyright or accessibility specialist at all, but I just enjoy those topics, so um, that's why I decided to talk about them. And you are welcome to ask questions as we, go, as we go. I will try to keep an eye on the chat, and I hope you enjoy the presentation. So in my position, I hear a lot of people asking, may I use this image for my online content? And normally my question back to them is, what is the image's value? Is a picture worth a thousand words? Uh, and I ask uh, that because a lot of people just want to add a picture to make the page look pretty without thinking about the consequences of adding an image. And when first addressing the image, we must determine its purpose. So why is it relevant? Is it to make things pretty? And nothing wrong with that. Believe me, I prepare this PowerPoint with pretty images. Um, is it to explain a concept? Is it to complement a concept? Or is it to add data or text in a different way? What is the purpose? So we should be using images and choosing images that will help our learners to connect with the content. And let me go here next. One second. So uh, after you know why you want to add a picture, let's look on where to find pictures. And we'll talk more about copyright later, uh, but all those sites that I'm showing you are copyright free images. And I wanna go ahead and give you some of my favorite sites so this information is right away and you will, you will get it right now. So the first one, you can actually always ask your book publish, publisher to see if their policy allows you to use their images. Second, public domain that refers to cre creative materials that are not pro protected by intellectual pro property. So, um, 
the the public owns and not an individual artist and or normally the copyright is expired so it's public and the third are the the free stock photos and those are some of the ones i like in this page you can see unsplash creative commons pixels pixabay for free photos uh burst shopify and i have one more page because i thought that the more the merrier and in this one, um, I, I want to mention while you take a look on those that actually Google Images is, has, has been improving a lot their tools for you to search for creative common license images. So that's a start point if you, if you want to use Google for photos. Don't just search in the web. Try to find places that are safe for you to find images. And so I, since I'm showing you some of the ones I like, and there are a lot of IDs here. If you guys have any different um, stock image photos that you use, please type in in the chat so other people can have access to more different resources for that. So let's see if anybody else have any suggestions of sites that we that I didn't mention. I think right now my favorite is Unsplash. Okay, I don't see any answers. So if not, um, it's okay. But if you remember, just make sure to type in the chat. So I'm going to start now uh, in our first real topic that is the types of image files. Um, there are two major groups of images that are raster and vector. And the raster images are constructed by a lot of pixels or individual blocks to form an image. So it's like a pin pin jpeg at gif png and most of the photos that you will find on the web they are rosters um and the pixels uh, they are like uh, defined by a proportion based on their resolution so they can be high or low but when the pixels are stretched to fill a space they are not they they are not only uh, intended to fit so they become distorted and so your image will be blurry and unclear so in order for you to retain the pixels, you cannot resize raster images without compromising the resolution. So my option, if you do that, find a very large image that you can work with the size. That way you are not going to lose on the resolution. Or vectors are way more flexible and they are constructor, constructed using formulas rather than pixels. So um, if you use the, the vector, it's it's more flex um it's more flexible in the way that you can create and resize the way that you want like if you have logos or uh, brand graphics and I'm, my recommendation is for them to be created as vector and that way you don't have any compromise on the quality and of your image um so this is a straightforward message do not increase the size of an image you downloaded unless it's a vector as i mentioned because when you you pull an image out of the web and try to get to change to reduce the size uh, you know it, it can distort the image you can see all those little pixels or blurs and that's why i want to show you just from your computer how you can do to resize an image without uh, uh, distorting the image so um, I know I say not to increase the size, but you can resize in a way that you can reduce or turn, turn uh, to rotate to the right, rotate to the left. So there is a quick way to do that is a shortcut. If you just right click on your image, you will see that the, the options there is rotate to the right and left on the bottom. And here you can see all the added options. Uh, the main one is edit, which will take you to paint and you can add it in paint. The second one is added with photos, which is from OneDrive, and then that is added with paint 3D. So let's see how those options look like. So the first one, when you add it in paint and you open the resize uh, panel, you will see that you can resize the percentage or pixels. I really like percentage because let's say you have a 100% image and you want to to fit, you know, on your slide or something, you can just put, oh, I want to reduce 50% and you will see. But very important here is click to maintain the aspect ratio. 
Same with uh, edit with photos. If you right click and you open with edit with photos, um, it looks like this and to the right on my screen. And you can see that you can crop and rotate and you can use um, the, uh, the circles in the bottom to, to decrease the image and change the size. And again, aspect ratio, try to keep it so you don't change it. You, so you keep changing it proportionally. Another one, which is the added with the paint 3D. Um, I have been using this one a lot because again, here you can change change this, the pixels and I, you have the option to lock aspect, aspect ratio. And I added the Mac option. I'm not a Mac user, but I look and I found like it's very similar to the options. You can also change pixels or percentage. And also they have the option to scale pro proportionally. And why I'm talking about that, because it's very important. If you just want to scale proportionally, and if you hit the shift key on your keyboard, you will resize your image and you will keep the aspect ratio. And this is why, let's see, it's not going, okay. This is why um, the first image was resized proportionally and the second was not. Can you guys see the difference? The second one looks distorted. The leaf looks crushed. The ladybug looks tight. I don't know, it doesn't look right. So my point is make sure your selections retain the regional image proportions so you will have an image with quality. Okay, we got to our first quick break. I think I'm going a little fast and let's see the questions. Okay, shutterstock.com. Could you please share a copy? I can share the copy, Samantha. If you, I, I, I will leave my email at the end and I can send it to you. Um, oh, and there is the recording. Thanks, Corey. Uh, do you guys have any questions on the images? Okay, let's take a sip on our water. Okay, so we will talk next. I'm going to increase here again. And um, we'll talk next about accessibility. I think I had one second here. I just want to check. I feel like this is the next one. So, okay. Making sure your image is accessible is a huge step for online content. So, when using images, the contrast and visual noise will affect the readability and usability. Not just for people with vision impairment, but for anyone. So providing an accessible image not only ensures that the image can be used, but they also enhance your content. So this topic is very, very broad, but I'll try to provide like the main points that I believe that are the most important. And if you want to learn more about this, you will see like on my pages, I have some links and those links have more information about all the topics I'm talking about. Uh, but mainly I will cover alternative text, the image contrast and visual noise. And please feel free to ask me as we go. Um, the alternative text can help uh, to give context, context and meaning to an image. And so you remember when we were talking about the relevance of the image, this is why we need to think carefully about which images to use. So we can uh, add the alternative text for a simple image with a simple meaning. That means that the, the alternative text will describe the educational purpose of the image. Then we can have a complex image with rich meaning. And when I was talking about an image is worth a thousand words, I actually found an image that was like a medical image that was like a hand with all the bones and all the veins and all the, you know, every little piece on the hand. And it was using it in, a, in an online content. And the description for that image was huge. So if you have a very complex image, my, my suggestion is to add a paragraph above or below the image that will give all the details of the image and in the image put a, just a simple description. And if you're like me and you like using decorative images, um, I have seen a lot of people that say, please do not out, uh, add alternative uh, text for uh, the uh, decorative image, but um, I have seen the, the screen readers do read the name of the image if you don't out add alternative text. So my suggestion is even if the image is just to make it pretty, write something short 
because you don't want the screen reader just to read the file name. Um, and I think most of you know this because you work in this area, but for those who doesn't know, it's very, very simple to add an alternative text. All you do is go to the image properties and you will see an ALT area with a box option and you just write down what you want for your text. For example, if you go to Word or PowerPoint, you click on the image and in the alternative text, you will see there is the box for you to write. And in your LMS, uh, I'm 100% sure that all the images you add, if you added the image properties, you will see the out uh, option for you to add. So now I will need your help. So I want to see how I'm going to do this. Let me throw this in there. But I want you to tell me, uh, oh, you can just answer this one. Okay. I want you to tell me what will be the most appropriate alternative attribute for this image. A, B, C, or D, or E. I'll give you a second to read my screen, and then I'll go back to the chat. Okay, I think we had enough time, so let me go back there. I have two answers so far, three answers, okay. We have two E's, one C, E, D or E. Okay, depends on the, oh, Erin, <laughs> great. Oh, Erin, that's great, okay. So yeah, it depends on the use. So I was going to say option A, probably, does not totally describe the content of the image. Um, the fact that George Washington is in the paint, maybe not be, you know, uh, depending on the context, may, maybe not re relevant. And the B, the option B, painting of George Washington may be good, but does not provide any additional um, um, information for, for the learners. So you guys say C, D, okay, C, let me see. Um, um, let me see. see George Washington. Okay, I uh, uh, option C alone will not be descriptive enough for this one. I would suggest you add something in the content itself before you describe, before you add option C, and then option C. Oh, okay, D and E. That was the ones that you guys said the most. D may be appropriate if the purpose of the image is to present an art technique, or. Uh, you know, details on exam, examining the, the art content. And E may be appropriate, but seems like, for me, it's too long and verbose, but that text could serve as a text within the content page. So you guys are totally right. As you can see, there is no one right answer. The best, it will be depending on the context context and int intended content of the image. So again, you guys rock because you guys knew that, huh? I love you guys are participating. <laughs> okay, so contrast and noise. I'm sure most of you have seen this image. It's like the, that test for color blindness and even with un unimpaired vision, it appears that contrast and noise make a difference in comprehension, right? So what number do you see? Can you please write in the chat if you see a number or if you don't see it all, or what do you see there? 74, oh my gosh, guys, 71, okay. So if you see 74, I have to say you are clear. Now, if you see 71, 21, 24, or nothing, then you have to check your vision because you could be red, green, colorblind. I know those tests are difficult, but um, I think they are fun because you can see how contrast make difference. Oh no, Farn, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, maybe it's my screen, but check out one of those tests because it's a fun thing to do, but um, you should be seeing 74. <laughs> okay, so, and here is why. Let me show you the difference. Look at the contrast example on the left side of my screen for Portland Club. The badge uses simple complementary colors scheme and it's both visually striking and practical. 
It separates and organizes various parts of the design into sections. So it's very easy to read everything that is there. The colors have enough contrast that like it's not overwhelming for your for your eyes. Now in the right side, the first example features two colors that don't belong together. The lime green and red combination creates a strain on the eyes, not to mention the fact that it's simply not tasteful. It's a bad choice. Now the second example illustrates how choosing two similar colors for both text and canvas can result in lack of visibility. It's nearly impossible to read that example. And the final example, uh, it, it features similar colors, but even though the colors are similar, there is enough difference between the two of them to be clear contrast and visibility. So again, it's very, very important uh, to, to, to think about the contrast and take time to check if the selections you have are appropriate. If you search on the web, you have an image or you have a page that you want to check, there are a lot of websites that do that check for you. And uh, some of the links I have here, as I mentioned, have those options for you. Now, an example of a noise image. Look at that. The typography and layout matters. Think about noise. Too many colors, too many fonts, too, mo too much movement to try to keep track from number to number, too many images. For me, that is too much going on. This is an example of something that can be overwhelming and distracting. I don't know about you, but I, when I started looking at this image, I was everywhere. I didn't know what to read first. So I went to look for more, and this is another example of layout. Now, the same concepts organizing in a different way. The order is in content blocks, top to bottom. Helps the reader. The, right, the white space and linear visual path is clean, so it makes the content easy to, to read. Um, it's essential for me a bullet list with the images. Uh, the text is direct, it's simple, you can identify the graphics and show exactly what they want to, to show. So for me, regarding the layout, less is more. Do you guys see the difference between them? For me, it's huge. I will just go back one more time. Look at the difference. The same information, just put it in a different way. You guys can also find those images in the websites below. So if you don't already know, and I believe that most of you know because you guys are in the air in the field, um, this is a great uh, source to learn about accessibility. Uh, the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, is an international community that develops open standards to ensure long-term growth in the web, but they provide our best friend content accessibility guideline, that is the WCAG, and it explains how the web content uh, can, the, the web content can be more accessible for to people, and really, you can find everything, everything in this website. If you go there and you search contrast, it will bring it. If you go there and search for um, alternative tags, any things that we talk here, you can definitely find there. For me, that is one of the best, well, it is the best uh, website for you to learn about uh, the guidelines for accessibility. Um, oh, I think I'm, I'm flying. Sorry if I'm going too fast. I'm a little anxious here, so. Okay, second break. I, I hope it's not too bad until now. So let me see if you guys have any questions. And I love to provide information. I think I forgot, but we are already in slide 22 out of 29. So we are going good. And next we'll talk about copyright. So let me go back and see. Oh, thank you, Chris. You're doing great. The bad choice hurts my eyes. Yes, you should see the bad choice with bifocals. <laughs> If you were on the phone screen or something small, check again on a larger screen. Yeah, so great presentation. Um, well, so far so good, guys. It's just, um, it is interesting to see how, how people perceive like some layouts that people will love. Sometimes I will look in and say, oh my gosh, how can you read this? So um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to read that you guys kind of agree on those layouts with me. Okay, so I'm, I guess I'm going to the next topic. And sorry if I'm too fast. I'll try to take a breath here. 
So I'm going back to my initial question that I always hear is like, may I use this image? And I'm going to say again, my answer it will be, it depends. What is the purpose? And also, we'll need to know where the image came from and what are the policies for that image. Let's check the terms of use. Again, I want to mention I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a librarian, and so the information I know about copyright or everything here is what I learned this year. So um, let's try to understand a little bit more this topic and um, how to safely use images, and I will provide you with some good resources for that too. Um, so just to reveal, a uh, copyright is a type of intellectual property that gives its owners the exclusive right to make copies of a creative work, usually for a limited time. The intention of copyright is to protect the work. And normally the length of the right is 70 years. So here are some myths that we hear all the time about copyright. Um, I, if, if I find it on the web, it's fine. Um, I'm an instructional designer, an educator, a student, or an artist. I can use it. Oh, I will remove it if I get caught. Oh, I will give credit. I will alter more than 10% or X percent. Oh, there's no copyright symbol. If I won't profit for, for if I, oh, sorry, if I won't profit from the use, I, I don't need permission. And the last one is no one will come after me. And it's not like that. Unfortunately, every image we use come from somewhere and we need to know where and, and whether or not we can use. And if we can use, let's provide the appropriate citation so we are not in trouble. Then you can tell me um, here, well, let me go in this one first. I was going to, okay. Um, if you find the image and you see, okay, there is a copyright symbol and um, which is a Create Com Com Commons license. And th in this chart, you can see that how I put it here is divided from most restrictive to most accommodating according to that color. So if you see the copyright symbol by itself, um, it is protected. If you see combining with any of the other elements, those elements tell us what to do with the image. So if you see the BY is by attribution, if you see the NC is for non-commercial, the ND no derivates, so you cannot change. The SA is to share like, and there is the zero, which is our favorite because it's for a public domain. And so there is no right reserve. Um, the, the license can come combined in all those different ways. So whenever you get an image, check to see how you are allowed to use the image. Here, me, uh, my recommendation for any faculty, it will be if when you download an image, make sure to check that. And if you see there is any restriction, talk with your librarian or someone and I would recommend to link outside, put the, put the link to the image on the website and don't forget to put all the, uh, the attributions for the copyright so you're not in trouble. And then you will tell me, oh, but, you know, there is fair use for the educational field. And I understand that a lot of pe people, especially when we talk with instructors, they, they claim, claim fair use. And fair use promotes the freedom of expression and it permits some of the copyright protect works to be used in certain circumstances. Um, but there is not a right formula for fair use. So it is case by case and it, de it depends on four major factors that you, you guys probably, if you're familiar with fair use, uh, there is a purpose. Of, the first is a purpose and character of the use include whether the use is um, commercial for a commercial nature or if it's non-profit or educational purpose. Um, second one is the nature of copyright work. So what type of work you're using? The third one is the amount and su su substantially of the proportion used in relation to with the copyright work as a whole. So you don't want to use the heart of the work because uh, then you won't be protected, but maybe you are allowed to use uh, one chapter that is not the main one of the book. So it depends. And fourth, the effect upon the potential market value for the copyright work. So if you do something that substitute the original value, you are infringing, but 
so you have to be careful there. It's very complicated, but as I mentioned, fair use is really case by case. So I know you can claim, but I always, and I'm going to repeat this, I always work with an expert at your libra librarian, someone uh, on your on your university that will give you support on that information. Ah, oh, okay. Again, um, how do I know if I can use an image? I love this chart. Uh, it's by Barbara Waxer, and she actually has one of the best compiled sites of safe materials. So I have her site right there too. And in this example, you can quickly decide if you can use an image or not. For me, it's very simple to, fo to follow. So like, let's say I have uh, an image, if it's public domain, domain i can use it now if all all rights reserved uh, then you go down oh it's fair use yes and i use it oh it's not do i have permission no so i stop the terms met yes so i go down so it's very it's very very simple to it's just yes or no yes or no and you will see that most of the times um that i mean i look at this image i have actually printed so i can follow um but um to be safe uh try to follow get an image and try to follow but before i move forward do you see that her image actually has uh in the bottom the copyright symbol right so can just um uh, just for uh, for fun can somebody tell me what are her conditions for for us to use this image can somebody write in the chat chat or if you want to put your mic and tell me Okay, let's see. Non-commercial use and share alike. There is one more attribution. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the most attribution. Perfect. So uh, that is exactly what it is. You have to to give attribution for her, which we're doing. Uh, it's non-commercial use, so we are doing that, and it's share alike. So we are good to use, and actually, she encourages us to use and. Please, if you go to the, her website, she has all her flowcharts. And as I say, she has a, comp a compilation of so many websites that it's like, it's amazing. Um, actually, she has even divided in different ways. Um, and she has explain explanation for uh, why to use this site or not and what type of images you find in each one of them. So she is a great source for us. And my, my thing for you all is like, Oh, let me increase here again. Okay. If you are in doubt, don't use it. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's, uh, I know that seems like super simple and, uh, but um, you have to choose a safe option. You can create your own image. You can download from free stock photos. You can find so many ways. Um, so if you're in doubt, don't use what you have and try to find another way. Also very, very important again, ask your librarian or your copyright expert, ask the, the book publisher, ask people around you that can help you with that, but try to find uh, places where you can see safe images. And that site that I have there too, I put a site there, uh, if you wanna find if your image and actually any material you have is copyright safe, you can just go to the copyright.org uh, website and you can find it. Oh my God, I think I flew by in the presentation. Okay, so that's my final one. I wanna thank you everybody and I wanna see if anyone has questions for me. No questions? Okay, so I'm going to ask you if you learn anything today because, you know, I like knowing if you learn. So did you learn anything today? Yes. B, absolutely. C, not really. D, not sure. I hope you guys learned something. <laughs> Good. Oh, Lucy, rest. Okay, that's cool. Yes. Thank you, great session. Oh, guys, you're too kind to me. I'm going to stop sharing here. Okay, any other questions?
Oh, great, Li Diang. I'm glad you like that. Barbara Wexler site is phenomenal. Check it because it's super cool. The chart. Yeah, Mandy, I share that chart with a lot of people and that chart is very helpful. Okay. Oh, and again, let me, I'm going to leave my, my email here for you guys uh, to ask the presentation. If you would like, I can send it. Okay. Thank you. It was helpful. Thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate everybody that is here today. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Erin. Clint, thank you. Mandy, thank you. I wish I was seeing you, everybody's on camera. Okay, have a good day. Bye.